ahead and call this finance committee meeting on February 22nd, 2016 to order at 6 p.m. Members from Kelly, the uh, finance committee that are present, myself, the members, Mr. Ken Hafley, Mr. Michael Zorn, President from Council, Mr. Spotton, Mr. Myers, Council President the Pledge, and Jason Kucinic from the administration is Mayor Dennis Morley. It is important to note that all our directors are absent and excused for this meeting. The purpose of the meeting tonight is to discuss or have a question and answer period concerning the lease agreement with the American Croatian Lodge. This has been referred to this committee as of last act, November, and it is still in committee. It has not moved forward yet. So with that, I would like to turn it over to the mayor first and have him do his thing. Thank you, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman. I believe you're all aware of the of all the items we've done in the city over the last few years uh, due to some of our financial issues. One is the YMCA. We went to an agreement with the YMCA to run our pool, so there's no cost. <coughs> I'm sorry to the residents of our city from their taxes. We also uh, went to the agreement with the panel to run our community center for the same reason. And, you know, with the different uh, complaints and concerns we've had about uh, Central Park, uh, I was approached by the lodge about taking over and uh, putting some fields back there, and, and so that's where we're at. I mean, it's everyone in this room, I would imagine, knows our financials, and uh, continue, if we can't uh, take care of it ourselves, or we can't get any initiatives passed, this is the way I, I thought we were going to try to go, so we have some nice things in our city. Uh, I know there's a lot of things out on social media about we're going to fence off the fields and no one's going to be allowed in. Uh, so those questions we can talk with Marco about. Uh, some other items were the fact that I guess that why don't we sell it? I guess the reasoning for my uh, concern on trying to sell it. Yeah, we can try to sell it. We can sell it for $300,000, let's say, and by the end of the year, the $300,000 is gone. My thought process on it was, who knows, maybe in 15 years, maybe the city will have some money. Maybe our residents will pass an initiative. Maybe there's all kinds of things for those, especially the older councilmen I've always known. My thought on that area one day could be uh, a senior center, another a swimming pool, a community center all in one spot. Uh, don't know if that would happen in my tenure, but that's a goal that I think the city should try to continue to have uh, to make that as good as we can. But in the meantime, instead of it looking like it looks, I believe this would be a, a good thing for our city. Any questions from the council? Mr. Sir. Uh, I have a question. I, I did have questions, but I, I got those answered. Um, I did have a question about the new lease compared to the lease that was uh, presented uh, in December. Um, under Section 9, uh, there was a subsection that talked about good faith effort uh, to accommodate these soccer leagues, and I see that's been removed from the uh, current lease. I just wanted to see if I can get an explanation why that was removed. It's the other way around. It's, 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 it's yeah. subsection B. It's been added. Yeah, we added B. It's the other one. Yeah, this is B is missing from. Yeah, it's it's from my copy too. This is the December one. This is the current one. Mine was A to C. Oh, I sent. This is the one I sent. Is the current one. The one it is. Actually, the numbers are off. I'll give you A, B, and then this one is A, B, and D. This is the one that I've been going on right here. Yeah. 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 I saw one that you guys are looking at from the emails. That from the emails is the most current. 
So I don't know why Thanks. that one was put in the box. It's not for me, at least. So this is the most correct one? Right yes. Okay. Excuse me, can I ask for clarification on that? There will or be no? After. Time for public input after the okay. council has all its questions answered. Speaking of that, though, also with soccer, I did invite East Lake Soccer tonight. East Lake is going to try to, in my discussions with uh, Marco, also been if East Lake Soccer wanted to take it over, they have no problem paying them. But again, it comes down to the fields and fixing the fields and everything else, and no one else has uh, come up with any money to do that. That's it. The mayor has brought up a good point, and I think it's very relevant to the new people who be aware of this. Those fields have been empty for two years. Um, we started taking a look at this back in April of trying to get a city league in there. We contacted East Lake Boys Softball. They have no interest in reestablishing that organization. Those fields belong to them. We contacted with East Lake Girls Softball. There was some interest there until they found out the cost to repair the fencing was between eight and ten thousand dollars. Once they saw that, they walked away. I have contacted several other of the leagues in the city. None of the leagues have the financials or the time or the effort to man these fields the way they need to be properly manned. I know the mayor has also been in contact with several of them. some questions for the public and the news have popped up. Um, fencing. Okay. How much of that do you do you see being fenced in, fenced off, <laughs> however you want to phrase it, please? The day I presented a diagram to everybody that was a very rough sketch. Um, we would have Fencing on the south perimeter of the lot where it butts up into the residential uh, housing, that would be completely fenced off. Uh, we were also looking at um, doing some type of fencing that would uh, basically be a boundary from that to Washington, or the property to Washington. However, with ability of an opening and ability of a passageway, and that passageway would go to this diagram where you would have on this park type setting where we would landscape it, update it, provide a pavilion uh, where that would be open area for everybody. Um, and then along uh, the side that actually bumps up, bumps up into our facility would not be fenced at all. And it would be fenced to the basketball courts where they're at today, uh, along with a short fence that would go uh, up and around where the playground is which would also have a gate and would open up. That's the intention. Obviously, these are rough drafts. Uh, quotes would need to be done. Architectural drawings would need. This was just a rough proposal of what we had in mind. Okay. So where the, the property abuts up to the back of the community center, the one acre lot, the acre and six tenths lot, whatever it is. Are you looking at our property? That's on Lakeshore. No, I'm looking at the city property. Okay. Okay. Um, that's Washington. Yeah, that's Washington. Okay. At the other end, there is some, you mentioned some playground equipment. There's some playground equipment that's actually towards um, the, the community center. Community center, center. That's correct. correct. And uh, there were some, some remarks on it social media that I made a public statement saying the intention is not to get rid of it, the intention is to put a, a small short fence there and still allow that, that playground and, and keep that playground for the community center. That's okay. the intention. That, that clarifies 
Um, just want to let you know that I have over, you know, once this all started, taking several trips over to there, taking a look at the property, taking several photos. Uh, I've been in contact with the mayor. I was in contact with Marco. We did submit some questions. And some of the questions, because I'm not sure if everybody else on council were able to see everything, but um, some of them were I question was um, throughout the contract, it was stating as landlord. Um, I asked who was that for the landlord, but was it City of Eastlake or was it Council? Because it was going back and forth. Uh, our law director did say that Eastlake will be in there, and that's fine. Um, I did question in regards to the playground equipment, uh, which we got that clarified. Um, One of the parcels, I believe, is uh, towards the far uh, on the western side there. Mm -hmm. It looks like the one parcel was right against the community center, which is the 1.14. And then there's the larger one, which is the 5.74. And then the next one over it actually belongs to the Willoughby Eastlake Schools. Mm -hmm. And then the next one, which is belongs to us. Are they looking at possibly, if this goes through, are we looking at flip-flopping it, or is what school's going to talk to the schools. The schools will work with us however what, what we need back there, uh, if there's any land that we need. We sat down with them and talked to them about that. Because it is weird how that is set up. you got the Board of Education, the City of Eastlake Board of Education, Board of Education, Board of Education, Board of Education. So I don't know how that ended up being that the city parks going to be able to all those. We haven't gone through the auditors to take a look at that yet. Again, just for for comments too. We weren't going to have the Croatian home if this wasn't going to move anywhere. It'll spend whatever it was for any architectural firms and all that. Uh, but we've been talking about if, if the city wants to move forward on this, we will. If they don't, we won't. Um, There's one other thing that we need to clear up. Are you done? Well, I was letting you finish. No, I, mine's a different to clear up something else that's on social media. Uh, but what I was just looking at as far as that as far as the, that lot right there, you know, that section right there, because some of the outfield fence does go into the Willoughby East Lake, <coughs> that, yeah. that ball field. Mm -hmm. So if there wasn't, I just want to make sure that that was going to get removed. Yeah, the intention, obviously, we were looking at seeing if, if, there was, if it was even feasible to flip it so that everything would be joined together and it would be one large space. I mean, it would be, it would obviously be properly surveyed. Uh, and then, you know, we would look at what we can use and what we can't use and upgrade and remove and, and install new fences. Okay, that was uh, that part of it. Uh, like I said, throughout the thing, it was just in regards to landlord, who was landlord, Randy already committed to that, that it would be East Lake and not the council. Um, other than that, well, I think everything else was uh, we were good to go with all my other questions, and I was fine with everything. Mr. Morris, can you clear up the social media about the 501c3 and the private uh, American Croatian Lodge? Because out there is being portrayed that we are going to go and do business with a for profit, and that's part of the reason out there for some of the issues with some of our residents. So, can you clear that up? Yeah, um, by all means. Well, to, to a certain extent, it is true. The American Croatian Lodge is a for profit business. However, there are many non-profit groups that are affiliated, associated with our group that are under our umbrella. Uh, one of our groups is the Croatian Soccer Group. There's a youth and adult group. Uh, they are non-for-profit groups. Uh, we, they run under us. We donate a significant amount of money to them. Uh, they have basically not free rent, but discounted rent. Their coaching staff is premier coaching staff that does this on a part-time basis also. Um, so there's there's no, it's not a for-profit business that part. Uh, the lease agreement uh, was intended to be with the Lodge for a reason. Um, the purpose is because of the financial implications that were involved. Um, the Croatian <coughs> Soccer Group doesn't have a hundred to a hundred or even fifty thousand dollars to invest in this kind of uh, project. 
so we would do it on their behalf. Uh, they do have a lot of significant costs, which would be offset with this project. Uh, so essentially, we would be liable through the city of East Lake, and I think it would actually work out in the best interest of the city of East Lake, considering we're the ones with the asset, we're the ones with the cash, and we would be essentially sponsoring this non-for-profit group. I don't know if that's clear for everybody or not. Thanks, Jason. Jason? Just follow up to that. Um, you said they are non are you work, you work with nonprofits. With respect to the soccer leagues or teams that would be playing there, are they all nonprofits or is there, is there a mixture of for profit or non profit? They're all nonprofit. They're all nonprofit. There are many nonprofit organizations. And are they the are they C three organizations or, they, or do they get some other um, executive that pay for I think they're five oh one C C three is it? Mm -hmm. I don't I don't know though. It's fine. Do, do people who make contributions to them get tax deductions? As they as which would indicate that they're a charitable organization? I believe so. I don't know how they exactly operate. I'm not on the board of directors there. Um, but it's my opinion. Okay. They have a membership fee as well. Okay. Um, so a lot of the parents that go on there, they essentially cover 99% of the cost. Okay. And also a follow-up to the fencing question. With respect to uh, pedestrians and cyclists that would be, say, cutting from the area over by Washington School to where the community center is, sure. would there be any obstructions that don't currently exist, or is there still going to be a, a pathway where a person can walk their dog or ride their bike through the middle? I don't know. I mean, we're open-minded to how this is going to be designed and diagrammed. I mean, we're willing to change and work with the city of East Lake and see what's in the best interest of everybody. If we can make a path off to the side or along one end, sure. We can try to figure something out. You know, this, this, this diagram here that's given is just, it's very rough. It's, it's something that we were hoping to develop a rapport with. You guys are working hand in hand with you guys on this project, and obviously the risk would be on our end to be able to manage it, maintain it, or the, the longevity of the contract. However, the design work is very, it's very raw. If we want to flip the fields or change the park a certain direction or change the path a certain way, as long as it's within a certain scope and within a certain budget, and we can't get too lavish in and make this project become a, a quarter million dollar project, because at the end of the day. You know, who's going to pay for this? It's going to be the, the kids and the kids' parents who are paying for this. I have to amortize the cost of this project over the, the longevity of the contract. So if it's 15 years, it's 15 years, plus the maintenance on a yearly basis to maintain the fields. And then I have to absorb that and essentially pass that cost on to the kids and the kids' parents. And so I, you know, we're <coughs> intending or we're hoping that the program is going to grow in order to alleviate some of that cost on an individual <coughs> basis. and. The lodge would obviously donate and help and maintain. So that's the that's goal. When do you anticipate starting uh, the construction or the building of fencing or whatever that would be? And redoing the fields, I'm sure, because a lot of that field is currently you know, in field for a baseball field. So when, when do you plan on starting all that? Is that going to be this spring? No, we don't know. I mean, we were. Under the assumption that this wasn't even going to get passed, and so we have some property that's actually in out in Shorten that we were looking at developing. We started drawings on that, so we have options. We're currently, you know, we have costs right now. The program has a cost. They're actually uh, leasing Lost Nation, and they're also going back and forth to different locations in East Lake, and so and they use our fields on a temporary basis for certain days. And the Shorten field is. Just property that you own? Currently. That is the property that the American Croatian Lodge owns that we would actually give to our nonprofit group to, for them to, to do this on. It's 115 acres that we have it on. So, yeah. Is it 115? Just, just shy of one thing. Yeah, one, 110 acres. So. Do you have any concerns as far as Assurances. This is a 15-year lease. I saw. That I know there's a provision in there that says something like uh, the parties by can mutually agree to extend by five years. But I think that's kind of a superfluous uh, provision because, of course, at the end of a lease term, the parties can agree to extend the lease. That's. I don't know what that means. That word that you used. Uh, Supervision means 
pointless basically. Okay. Um, so, uh, would if say we were given an option for the other five years as opposed to just my mutual agreement with the party, would you be willing to pay something in rent for additional assurances or anything along those lines? It's something that we would consider. Sure. I don't. I mean. Because right now this deal, when we originally what we proposed was a 20-year deal, because we looked at what the amount was going to be, what our current fees are for the program. 20 years made sense. Say it's not going to be any more expensive for the kids to still go ahead and play in practice. 15 years is now it's squeezing it, and it's there's a premium now if we go in this direction. It, this is not exactly a great business deal on, on behalf of the American Croatian Lodge to be investing this kind of cash in, in a per piece of property that isn't ours. And so it's, but, you know, I mean, we kind of see this as a, a global benefit for everybody. And um, at the end of the day, you know, it's all going to matter what, what the dollars are going to come out to. And it's feasible for us to absorb that help. My next question is, is uh, directed more towards the mirror. Council members who've been here a little bit longer than I have. Um, what is the city's current expenses with uh, respect to that area, and uh, and can you kind of break it down a little bit? I know that certainly there's going to be get to pay somebody to move that. Or, well, I, or, the 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 labor's fixed. You know, we were in, in uh, last year. We were going to close the community center down. We were just until we got the deal with PAL. There is no expense. Our expense here is bodies. We don't have bodies to maintain the, any any of the fields here, and that's the bottom line. We're not going to add any bodies. I know there was also some stuff on social media about summer help. Summer help cannot be hired in the city of Eastlake while we have people laid off. Last year we tried to do summer help with the union and bring back one of their people that were laid off, and they didn't agree to that. Let alone bring in outside bodies. So the summer help for cutting grass will be, it's not in the budget this year as you guys know, because we cannot hire unless they agree and they're not going to agree. It's in their labor agreement, no summer help while people are laid off. People are laid off, uh, they will, their seniority will cut in November of this year. So next year people can, can do some help. Again, you know, I'm not going to sit here, everyone in this room knows, we have, just like for snow plowing, we have six people at snow plowing, compared to the city next to us that has 18 crews, the other city has 25 crews, so we do the best we can. Again, the complaints are that our parks look bad, uh, and we're trying to just make them that they don't look bad. But you can't have, you can't say you don't want to do something and pass them. I'll go back to 2013, the big thing when city council, we didn't open the pool. And Councilman Hayfley said, okay, let's go on the ballot. We put a ballot on us for $1.26 a month, a month, and it failed. So where are the priorities from sometimes from the residents? They're saying, we want it, but $1.26, we're not even going to pass. We failed 11 straight levies. As I've said in other meetings, we the school the Willoughby Eastlake schools in Lakeland passed on a whole, but those levies failed in the city of Eastlake. So we're, what we're trying to do is run without money and try to have things that some other cities have, and this is one of the ways. I mean, we did, like I said, we did it with the Y, we did it with EPAL. This is what my the plan is. It isn't about, like I said, it isn't about, hey, we can sell and make 300000 at the end of the year. You guys know we're doing the budget. We're looking at a three dollars Hundred thousand dollar carryover going into seventeen, but again, if we sell it to them for three hundred thousand, and it's gone forever. This way, I'm saying that we go and do this lease, and then if it reverts back to the city, the people in power then, hopefully, like I said, there is some money, and they can build and do whatever they want to do. Excuse me, and they're doing the enhancements. We are not. And so. saying we get the improvements. Right. They're not going to pull the field out when it's done. That we can't do. We, we don't have, that's it, we don't have the manpower. We can't hire people to do it. We haven't been able to do it. We haven't done it. That's why it looks like it does. So at the end of the 15 year lease, yeah, we can do a mutual agreement. You know, I don't know, you know, if they want to go for it, maybe they don't want to go for it. Maybe we won't want to go for it. But I think that leaving that open for discussion at that time would probably be appropriate. But <clears throat> um, the. You know, this is, you, you said a 
quarter million dollar investment. We don't know. Yeah, I know you don't know because the we last can time. We start drawing this up, and at the end of the day, if you guys want to get elaborate on it, it's half a million dollars. Well, a lot the is, away. You know, nothing yeah, is ever set in stone. That please be recognized by the chair. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Now, he might have been talking to me. <laughs> Sure. So, um, but yeah. the last time we heard the guy said three hundred thousand. We were talking about a twenty-year lease, but whatever it is, sure. the fact is that there's nothing set in stone. If we were to, um, you know, pass a levy, or you know, somebody wins the lottery and we get some influx of cash, because let's be frank, that our our ability to raise revenue here is really limited. We can always go back and revisit it. The money can always be set aside. As council, we always have the ability to to say, hey, you know, in fifteen years. Maybe we can do this. Maybe we could do something down at the Brucey Ballpark one of these days. You know, maybe if we get some kind of funding, we could turn that into a Central Park area. That's just as dilapidated as Central Park. I've never even called it Central Park before. It was always the property between Washington and the community center. So I don't know where Central Park came from. But um, so, I mean, we always have the ability to do things. We want to keep our assets that we have. If we have somebody else who's going to come in and invest in them and make our city a better place, I think we have to look long and hard at that. Um, and, and in 15 years in our lifetime might seem like a very long time, but in the life of the city, it's not that long. It's not that long. One more point before I turn it back over to you, Marco. Jason, the property, the one acre parcel right behind <coughs> EPAL, was maintained by EPAL last year. They cut their landscaper cut mode, kept that from the uh, basketball court along the fence line, over to the far fence line, we were the ones who kept that cut, not the city. Uh, Marco, I'm sorry, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, I, 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 didn't, I, didn't, I, don't, I don't think I had any other things to say. I mean, we can talk about this all night. So. <coughs> Mr. Aitken, did you? I say, I say, no, I think Ken's got something. Oh, no, <clears throat> I was thinking I missed one of the questions in, that I did ask Marco on, and what I was questioning was, would there be any night games played, and uh, his answer was at this time, no, they're not looking to install any kind of light, lights or poles, uh, because my concern was if anything was being played at night, you know, do we need to create some kind of buffer zones for the neighboring ground? And that your, your comment was, at this time, they're not looking to do that. Now, lighting is a huge investment. It's something that we've already looked into for our current field right now, and it's, it's pretty significant. And we would be looking at that more as um, not being a, uh, an annoyance to the residents. Sure. So the fact right. that you're not interested in it, it makes it better. That makes the, the package more appealing. So, that's me. One more question, bad. Marco. You stated that uh, you had some drawings going on on the Chardon property? That's correct, yeah. Who's uh, doing them? Who's doing the drawings? Yeah. Um, we actually had Mr. Schuster, an architect, a long time ago, start providing the original drawings. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's some modified versions that were proposed to us by the nonprofit organization. I don't know who did those drawings or those diagrams exactly. Uh, there was a lot more uh, excavating and topography being done according to their drawings. So it's there's a lot of different proposals, um, but nothing is concrete yet. Um, I guess my question would be, would it be possible to get some type of architectural drawing presented to this committee or to this council on the proposal for the Central Park? I can look into it. I won't make any promises. I don't know what the cost would be uh, to provide proper architectural drawings with topography. You're also looking at... Um, not only just the landscaping, but the drainage, um, plumbing, the irrigation, everything else that's going to be included in there that I'm unaware of. I mean, I don't know what the price is going to be okay. for something that's, you know, that we're on. We don't know if this is going to pan out. Okay. So I can look into it. That, would, the be, pledge. that would be a big investment for you to put into that property, not knowing yeah, if you're even going to have the use of it. Not to mention, I mean, we don't know what you guys had in mind also. That we were we were actually looking for this to be more of a joint effort, kind of <coughs> to sit down with everybody and go, okay, this is our proposal. Is there anything that you guys were looking at differently? Is there anything you guys wanted in a certain space differently? And then we can kind of go back and forth on that and have a lot more dialogue, opposed to having something that's black and white. You know, and go, okay, there's a lot of gray in this. 
and we want to make sure that you know we're part of the city here. We don't want to ruffle any feathers. We want to be kind of conjoined with the city, not going back and forth against the city. That's the intention. Mr. Pledge. Just also to address some of the social media issues, there was a reference that this contract was written by the Croatian Center to favor them. This contract is uh, pretty much a standard contract that we use, that the city has used, that we've used this before. Most recently we used it with the Willoughby's Public Library to take over the use of the uh, one end of City Hall. So just to make it clear and put it on the record, um, the Croatian Lodge and their attorneys did not draft this lease at all. And it's been a mutual document that the city has had <coughs> ample opportunity to review and to have input on, as has the Croatian Lodge, who should have had more input and opportunity to review it if they're not the drafters. So I wanted to clear that up on the record as well. Mr. Gatefully. Mayor, this question uh, for you. If this does move forward, uh, when it comes to the drawings, I know that you, Marco mentioned that, you know, it would be you know, with us and everything. Would that be, the, would the decisions be made as far as what goes in there and how things get laid out strictly, like with maybe yourself and the service director? Or would that be something that could be moved over to, like, the recreation committee? Or I have no issue with it going to the recreation committee. I mean, it wouldn't be to hold anything up. <coughs> you wouldn't want to hold anything up. I'm just wondering if there was any, like, if you wanted to do a design or do something that, that we would have some kind of input. I think, I think Mr. Pledge. Just not to step on your toes there, Marco, mm -hmm. but... I think if whatever they're going to do, depending on the significance of it, if they're going to, it's going to have to come through the um, building department. They're, if they're going to put up a gazebo, they're going to have to get a permit Correct. for it. So we're always going to have input to look and see what they're doing and how the design is. Correct. And if we don't like something, you know, that we're going to work together. I, I see them coming to the table as a partner. That's what I'm. You know, so. I agree. But again, they're still going to have to follow all the same ordinances that everybody in the city follows. And if they're going to put any type of development there, change drainage, um, they're going to be in here talking to the building director and, uh, and, and we're going to make sure things are done properly and that, you know, the residents are protected and that their property is damaged and that uh, it's used for a proper purpose. Yeah, I see this as being all the Marco. I'm sorry. Marco, go ahead. <coughs> when we record the meeting, she doesn't know who's who. So okay. I need to say her name so she recognizes it. Um, while we're doing the, the drawings, I'm assuming that there's going to be multiple revision levels. And prior to even um, you know, giving the green light on our end to proceed with this, there's obviously going to be uh, appraisals and, and, and budgets and, and bids that are going to be proposed and who's going to be doing the work and the scope. And you know, if this comes out to be a lot higher than what we anticipated, it still gives us the flexibility to walk away from this to say it's you know, this is kind of, it's become too much for us to, to invest in, so. Mr. Myers? Good. Mr. Spahn? Okay. I'm looking through the lease more directly towards the mirror. I know that the panel had requested a section in there about five so we took it out and we back and said that, you know, we'd be going to work with them as long as they have the uh, written consent. Is that, I don't see that back in the list. Yeah, well, their plans, and Mark and I talked to that, their plans are not to use our parking lot at all. Not to use the parking lot at all? If there's something, something on roads they've talked to you, but other than that, yeah, I think it would be great to have the flexibility to work with you on if it's a crazy weekend for some written consent. Uh, however, you know, for us, it's in our best interest to use our parking lot for our local businesses, for our restaurant, for our banquet to, to drive more traffic through there. At, you know, I would love for them to park at our place as opposed to your parking lot. It just makes business sense. Okay. So. I have no other questions. Anybody else? Good. Okay. At this point, we uh, have nothing under miscellaneous. I would like to uh, jump into recognition of the public. And I would like to caution everybody please be recognized, state your name and address. <coughs> all comments will not include personalities, and all comments will be directed towards the chair. Okay. With that, I will open it up to public. 
we had set aside a half hour, three minutes per person. If we have to go a little longer, there would be no problem. So anybody wishing? Nobody? Nobody? Name and address. I'll tell you bike. Angelo Trevisano, 34186 Walmer Drive. Um, I just want to first thank everyone. I think that the question and answer session was really helpful uh, because there were a lot of questions. It sounds like just based on some of the comments that were made, there were questions that I haven't even seen. I mean, we keep uh, mentioning social media. Apparently, there was something that even we didn't see. Um, so that was very helpful. So I think, you know, all of us or all the residents that are here that aren't part of council or part of the lodge are thankful that we were able to come by and answer some of these questions because uh, I know that a lot of questions and comments have been thrown out there. Um, I guess just the first comment I would like to make is that all of the documentation, all the leases and all the letters and any comments, um, for anyone that happens to be reading these minutes after the meeting are going to be on eastlakedata.org uh, in case anyone wants to look at them later. Um, the second question, I guess the second question or comment I had was um, the Croatia Juniors, is, that's the nonprofit organization. Correct. And I think that um, a letter was sent to the city administration that it is a 501c3. Mm -hmm. Do you know if it's still a 501c3? I tried to look it up and didn't see it on the IRS website. And then another document that was also included, it shows a list of all the East Lake nonprofits. And um, Croatia Juniors wasn't on that list. Um, I figured maybe it was an older list, so I double checked it and it still isn't showing up. So I'm not, I, I know you, you said you aren't on the board of directors of that organization, so maybe, maybe you don't know for sure, but I guess it's just kind of a still still a loose end. You know, this lease is not with a nonprofit, and I don't, I don't want to get like hung up on that fact. But it's just it's yeah. I mean, we have I don't know. Marcus not, was or Mr. The Mayor. Either one of you can answer that question as to the five hundred one C three because I have seen the documentation. This should have been in the record request you asked. Yeah. Yeah. I have it. Yeah. And Warren Shaw, what does it? It shows the Croatian. American Heritage Foundation, our Croatia, and then this one here, the September 15, 501c3, with okay. the group that we talked about. Okay. So that's what they were given to me, Croatia Juniors Inc. Okay. So I don't know why, you know, agree. I don't know if it's just not on here, but this is the document okay. that's signed off by the federal government. So there's uh, potentially three, at least three nonprofits yeah, that will use this, not just one. It's not just one soccer yeah, this organization. Is to the IRS, this one, the last one. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, because uh, I mean, just in the email, it said Croatia Juniors. Did you get this part on first page? That on there? But that's from September yeah. 2015. Your name, please. Sorry. I got, I got that part too. Yeah. I, I guess I just didn't know if you were trying to show that Croatia Juniors was a nonprofit. Yeah. But that's I guess why the I alternative that. explanation is that there's three organizations right. that might be using it. Okay. And then I, I guess because because we don't. No, if it's a glitch with the IRS, I mean, maybe it's just a glitch or something. You work for the federal government. I work for the federal government. Yeah, I didn't see it. Um, the easiest way to answer that question, is there an EIN number on that form? Uh, there is. Yes. And the date on the form? September 29, 2015. Okay. They are legitimate. They have been yeah. issued a state ID. What do you say? <laughs> EIN. Yeah. Under the 501c3, they have to have that. It has to be recognized by the state. It has to be recognized by the federal. Right. Um, I, it's not yeah. It's not an important point, okay. ultimately. Um, well, it sort of is because on social media, well, it's continually saying that they're not nonprofit. And again, I, I'm, I'm good with that. I've told you both. I'm good with social media. But when there's things on there and then I'm getting phone calls or he's getting phone calls saying the opposite because social media said they're not nonprofit, then it is an issue. So that needs to be fixed. It needs to be fixed. So anybody else? Yes. Jessica Trevisano, three four one eight six, Waldemar Drive. 
So I don't think it's inaccurate. Even Marco said it's not inaccurate to say that the lease is between a for-profit entity and uh, the city, even though even though a nonprofit is going to be making use of the field, it's still a for-profit entity. That's like if you had a lease with like Walmart, and then Walmart said, "Don't worry, it's our nonprofit arm that's going to use it." I don't think it's an inaccurate statement to say that the lease is between. I think that you come to the meetings and you understand the rest because you hear everything. Right. But what's on social media, people just run with it, and that's the problem sometimes. Who's saying that? Anybody else? Chris Kroniak, uh, 1278 Waverly Road. I haven't heard anything about that. That's the first time heard it, hearing of it. But it's, it's a, a very good like, point. It's not on Facebook, it's not a difference. Yeah, it's a very good point, though. I mean, I think, I think the thing that we've seen, and Marco, you're on, on my page as well, I think the thing that we've seen is a lot of people saying, why only $1? If, in fact, we are, as we've done with ePal and the Y, giving to nonprofit organizations, say, okay, in light of this, you know, you know, wonderful sharing, we'll charge you a dollar. But these are not for-profit entities. So, no, I am grateful. I think it's fantastic that you're assuring us that to keep the original park-like setting to which Central Park was, was originally designed for um, is reassuring for some <coughs> residents. I mean, we don't want to see that lost. There, it, there's a feeling of giving away green space um, and getting nothing in return. Um, I, my also concern is in 15 years, while it's a, it's a wonderful thought to say in 15 years we may be in a better place and certainly we could do something with it, sure, what happens if we're in a worse place, something goes wrong, you guys back out, now we have a $250,000 fields back there, we can't take care of the fields that we have now, now we're stuck with all of the landlocked space back there and can't take care of it. So, um, and the only place to get to it would be from your property. So, I think those are concerns for people. Um, you know, I, I worry, well, I think one good question that was brought up was about um, stormwater easement. All property owners are required to pay stormwater assessment to the county, and this is only a dollar a year that we're going to be charging you, so who's going to be eating that? I'm assuming the city. We have to pay it regardless. We pay it now. So, but this isn't something that could be built in that that is their cost. Well, I guess we could look at that. I mean, it's, I think it was, what, $250? A year? A month? Like something? I don't know how they bill the it. I mean, we have, the, you know, we're paying for the one at the Y. Are, the does e I'm sorry, does EPAL pay? I'm sorry? Does EPAL pay the stormwater? No, they do not. Okay, so the city is paying for that one as well. That is being looked into at this time. I mean, it's not, the way we're looking at it, it's our property, so we're paying for it. it the, I guess from my end is what I've said is they're putting in the improvements, whatever it's a quarter million, hundred thousand. That's the way I look at it. Instead of the dollar, I guess I think Laura had something that she said it shows like it's seventeen hundred dollars a year or whatever. It's it's about from from my end and our end is that we're going to have something that. That we can be proud of. I mean, sure. we've gone through the thing in Jackson, you're well aware, and we're just trying to do that in a different part of the city. Right. I mean, I can't, you know, say that any clearer that I wish we could do the drawing that you sent over to us. I wish we could do that, but this drawing, where'd it go? This drawing is not free. This drawing is not free to maintain. So, but if we had the money, then obviously we'd, we'd have different parks. But, again, we're just trying to do things. And I, and I think we've done a good job over the last so many years of having people pay for everything that we don't want to pay for. You know, with the pool and with the e-pal and possibly this. And I think that's what I, I think the big picture sometimes everyone misses at. We don't want it do something, but the alternative is we're trying to get it where everyone else is paying stuff for us, and we've gotten that done, and it's, and, and I'm good with the banter and the the people's concerns, you know, what? I'm, we're here to do what's best for the city, myself, the seven of them, and the directors here, and, and that's all I can say on that, I mean, it's been my goal, and it will continue to be the goal that we can do the best with for our residents. Yeah.
Okay. <coughs> Jessica Trevisano, do you want me to restate yes. my address? 34186 Waldmer Drive. Um, so the way I see it is that council really has two choices. You can either vote for this park and maybe have an aesthetically pretty <laughs> space, but one that isn't open to the residents, that residents can't freely use. Or... I think we've clarified that. I don't think we... We stated very clearly that this park will be open to the residents. There will be a walkway through there. There will be a pavilion area. Correct me if I'm wrong, Marco. That's an intention, but at the same time, we're very reluctant to sublease this out or allow the football team or somebody else to use it from an actual field standpoint. We are very concerned that we're going to, the American Croatian Mind will put a huge investment into a piece of property that is not ours and then it will be demolished by something that we don't have control over. It is essentially protecting our investment. Um, we stated before, we would love to have the East Lake Rec you know, come over by us. We would love to figure out what the cost is to run the whole thing and rent it out for whatever cost is, just to absorb the cost. Uh, we would love to have more East Lake kids in our group. So essentially it drives our cost down for our entire program. Uh, we would love to grow the group. Uh, however, uh, no, we're not open to allowing, you know, East Lake rugby team to, to use the fields. No. <coughs> And, and that's the intention. And I think so. if, if you were buying that property, then that would be wonderful and fine and like a great <coughs> business negotiation and a good deal for the city if they were buying the property. But it's city-owned land that I think sh those fields should be accessible to the EPAL kids who want to play on the land or to the kids who live at Dover Place or anybody who wants to just freely go over and use those fields. So I think your choice is really between aesthetic soccer fields that look nice and will hopefully look nice in 15 years or 20 years when we get them, or keeping that land open and accessible to the public, and those are just two values that you are going to have to weigh as council. Um, and I can completely understand what you're saying. Sorry, Chris Kranjak, 1278 Waverly Road. I can completely understand that. I'm on the fence with it. I get why you would not want people. I understand that those fields have irrigation, that they're mounded up so that the water drains off. You put a lot of money and a lot of time and effort into them. They're far superior than the fields over by, you know, at First Energy. Um, so I understand why they would not allow that. I do. I don't think anybody just allows anyone to use EPAL. EPAL has specific jurisdiction over their property, and the same with the Y. Um, I understand that. Um, in Section 9B, which is where you all first started off, um, it says, Tenant agrees that good faith efforts shall be made to accommodate youth soccer leagues affiliated with the landlord. Um, so it, it, what specifically would you have in mind? Like, say, um, Eastlake has a soccer tournament, at the end of the year soccer tournament. If, if it was feasible, they could use the fields. Is that what, what you're talking about, or are you talking about... Why specifically was that put in there if you are not open to or amenable to having soccer play there, our soccer leagues play there? I don't quite understand the question. I mean, it, it wasn't quite clear what you just stated because we are open to having East Lake soccer programs there. Um, that's the intention. But at what cost? Okay, so you are amenable to having soccer cost? play. I mean, yeah. it's going to cost us at the end of the year twenty thousand dollars to maintain the fields. Okay. That's every year, cutting, fertilizing, lining them up, uh, doing everything that's necessary. So, and it's going to be only used for twenty five, thirty weeks out of the year. Right. And so, uh, when we do the math, it's you know whatever it is, seven eight hundred dollars a weekend. Um, so, would we be willing to give it to the the small kids at that cost for the weekend for a small tournament? Of course, the wear and tear is minimal. Right. You know, we, of course we would be. You know, we have no intention of charging a premium for something like that. And we're also looking at revising some of our internal group to say, okay, if they're East Lake residents, let's give them a discount on our program to give them incentive to grow the program. And hey, look, this is a part of their property that they're paying for anyway. So right. 
you know, the, we're trying to come to the table with solutions. Not sure. everything is set in stone. Please keep that in mind. Right. So we're, we're trying to come up and work with different mm -hmm. options and, and things that we can do. Yeah. Anybody else? Angelo Trevisano, 34186 Walmer Drive. Um, I guess just the only other comment I had was I, I didn't know that those fields were only vacant for two years. Is that, is that correct? Two years? Been approximately two years. Two or more. years. I, the last time I was over around there, I mean, it looks like they've been vacant for much, much longer than that. I was thinking at least like 10, 20 years. But the fact that it's only been two years, uh, it just seems like a, like a very, very short time to just immediately let go of it. I, I could see if it would, you know, if there were just trees already growing back, you know, but two years just seems, I mean, I, I would love to, as I've written in my letter to council, I would love to see that property be made into a proper park mm -hmm. that all residents can use, that all residents can enjoy. And, and if that can't happen, then I, then I think that the, the Lodge's soccer facility plan is like a really good alternative. But I think a, a public park that could be used would be better. And I think while, I, while, there are, while it's been stated that you know, we, don't, we don't have the money, we also, it doesn't, at least to my knowledge, haven't applied for any grants. If we contacted any companies, like we did with Best Supply for the pool, um, the county for the $75,000 grant for pool additions. Um, I mentioned the fraternal or the fraternity of Eagles, who recently moved into Dubingo. They expressed in public meetings that they were looking to contribute to the city of Eastlake and its organizations. So I, I guess just that that just really stuck out to me. It's only been two years. You know, and I know that you need to make your moves. You know, you you know, money is a let is me, a thing. And let me answer a couple of your questions. I've contacted Pepsi. I've contacted Coca Cola. No interest. None. Not even as a sponsor. None of the leagues in this city want anything to do with that property. The city cannot maintain that property anymore. You see the condition it's in right now. You thought it'd been closed ten years. It's only been two. How's it going to look in another year? Okay. The fencing in that area is becoming a safety hazard. The fencing is falling over. Okay. Eight to ten thousand dollars just to replace the fencing. Just to replace the fencing. To repair or replace. EPAL look at it. We can't afford it. We can't. To answer your question, yes. Corporate sponsors have been looked at. Grants, I have not personally looked at any grants to maintain that property. Um, I can't speak for the city. I'm sure they have. The thing to remember about grants is, for every one grant you find, how many people or cities do you think are applying for that grant? So, <coughs> anybody else? I, I can kind of understand what you're talking about. I'm sorry, Chris Kroniak, 1278 Waverly Road. I can understand what you're talking about. I was kind of shocked that only two years, and and I understand the state of it after two years is pretty decrepit and blighted, but it has been two years. Um, it, I was shocked to understand that we still have a boys' baseball league that plays at different fields. I don't know if anyone's approached the boys' baseball league to see if they could get them back over to there. Um, or even adult softball leagues. There's a lot of private adult softball leagues. I, I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence with that. I, you guys have answered quite a few things. Um, some people had questions of um, numbers in the parcels being switched with letters, and that's just semantics. You guys can fix that. No issue with that. Um, the, the thing that I'm really pleased with that I hear you saying is that you're willing to work with the park and the surroundings if, in fact, you do. This does go through, and you get those soccer fields that you're willing to um, keep up the integrity of the park um, and, and have the green space still be there and have it be accessible to the residents. I think that was really, really important. The only other question that I had is, does the city have any intention of sending letters to any of the residences that abut those parcels to notify them that there is going to be construction, that there may be noise there, 
when there are soccer games, um, that type of thing. I don't have an issue with us doing that. I would, I, I think what I, what noise or whatever after the construction is it's always been a park, so I, I would hope the residents that live there know that already, but you know, we don't have, I don't have an issue sending out any letters to anyone. I just wasn't sure if that was something that you guys did or yeah, not. The, the thing with the leagues and right now, because I had to ask the law director for a decision, Nick and I just went into the building back there and we've been trying to get a hold of softball and no one's responding. <laughs> We're actually getting ready to sticker it and say the belongings are going to be the city of East Lakes here shortly and possibly put it in the newspaper to say if someone doesn't step forward to come and get it, every, the contents are ours. And the pavilion that we talked about is the pavilion back there and the old um, area where they sold candy and gum and everything out of is what we've talked about with them that they would improve and make it a very nice place for our residents to go to during that. Um, as most of you know, that I mean, the, the fields aren't used at all there right now, and that's why they are. You know, my intentions will be, or the city's intentions will be. If this doesn't go, we're just going to have to find time to start taking all the fencing down. Right. And then when we take all the fencing down, whoever does or the city has to come back and try to make them fields again, there's going to be a, a major cost. But again, as Mr. Evers said, the fencing's falling down, I can't have someone get hurt, so we're going to start trying to, we're going to probably start tearing fencing down ourselves as time permits. Uh, but again, I, I tell everyone that's contact me, just at least walk back there and tell me what you think. Right. Um, like I said, I don't Maybe I shouldn't have used the word blighted in my first time because I had offended some people. But, uh, you know, I'm embarrassed of it too. I was embarrassed as a councilman, I'm embarrassed as the mayor of some of our areas. We're just trying to make do with, that, with, with working on outside entities. And this, this is a good group. They're a big part of our city. Oh, yeah. I mean, that Croatian Lodge and the things that, that I've dealt with as a councilman and as now. They want the best for our city. If you saw the article, what, a month ago, about the improvements they've done over there, they're planning on staying here. We just, I'm not saying you just say, hey, everything, because we need you to stay here, but I, we need to work with them. And that's all these meetings are intended for. And, again, this is what these meetings are for. And I'm glad we have some people that came out, because the keyboard strokes drive me crazy when people send me, send me links and things of everything that's going on out there, and I just shake my head. It's like you come here and you hear everything, and it still can go out and, and be portrayed how the meeting went. But this is what I would love that this room's filled, but it never is. It's just, it is what it is. You know what? And I've said this before the, the four new people and the three, they're working hard for this city. And, and, and I know some people think we're not, but they are. I give them the utmost credit, especially the four new ones. You know, their first thing that they passed was. They're not taking the, the raise that we haven't taken for the last three times, which is not a ton of money, but it's still, if you add it up, it, was, it would be another 1800 and they're the lowest council in the area. But again, they're not in it for the money. Obviously, I'm not in it for the money. <laughs> so. One at a time. Uh, Jessica Trevisano, 34186, Waldemar Drive. Um, I have three questions. Hopefully they're pretty quick. The first is, um, maybe you guys don't know, but is there a reason that the ACL doesn't have sidewalks in front of the building? What's that got to do with this meeting? Well, if the ACL keeps saying that they want to improve the public, be you know helpful to the public, I think that the fact that for some reason theirs is one of the very few buildings on Lakeshore that doesn't have sidewalks, I'm sorry, I find that question to be impertinent to this finance meeting about the lease for okay. the soccer fields. I will move that on then. a question you can direct to them at another time. Okay, I'll move on to my second question. Um, uh, in the lease, it doesn't say when the improvements are due. Is that something that council might consider putting into the lease? So there's no, like, in one year, in two years, in 15 years, um, when the soccer fields would need to be built. I think, I mean, if this would go through, I mean, their plans aren't that we're going to build something. Or they're, they're planning on just doing it once this is passed. Right. I and mean, we could put a time frame in if that would make people happy. I don't know. Yeah. I know. Do you have an issue with time frame? Can just say, say something. Your name is. Yeah. Ante Slavic. I'm also a member of the Croatian Wise Board of Directors. 
I don't know if we've dealt with Marco, but this is something, we go back to your point, um, I don't know the best way to put this, but we're not, you know, if you look at our group in general, American Croatian Lodge, and what we're structured, we have an immediate need now for these fields. So not something we're looking to do five years, ten years. We're looking to do this tomorrow in our Chardon location. Now, the opportunity is there to stay in these things. We've been here for 30 years. I was born here. Most of our members, our shareholders, whoever it be, live in Eastlake currently. So we saw the opportunity next door to this park, this field that's mm -hmm. falling apart, that really, one, for us as a business being next door, it's an eyesore. Two, we have an immediate need for it. Now, you know, you, you go back to nonprofit, this, that, whatever it may be. Yes, the Croatian Lodge itself is a for-profit, and we are a business, but we're not doing this as a business deal for us. Uh, we built that additional building, what was it, 10 years ago? I don't know how familiar you guys are. We leased the bottom half. The upstairs is donated to Croatian School, a couple different Tamaritsan organizations, uh, multiple other nonprofits. That was the purpose we built it. We didn't build that for ourselves. We put the space downstairs, hopefully, to pay cover costs so it doesn't come out of our pocket every year. Same idea with these fields. It's going to be for Croatian soccer field. And now you guys have concerns of the city of Eastlake. Again, Marco said it. We're best with it. We we're not going anywhere. We would prefer not to go to Chardon, but the deal has to make sense. Uh, so just kind of put my sense, maybe a different perspective, or to hear someone else's opinion. But you guys are absolutely right. We are here for the long haul. You know, Marco and I sit on this board of directors. We're not paid on it. This is all volunteer. <laughs> we do this on the good of our heart for our community. We were, you know, <coughs> raised within the Croatian community, within East Lake. I spent half my childhood in that lodge. So this is something we want to continue, not only for my kids, but their kids, and so on. So. For us to ensure the next 15 to 20 years, not only for the Lodge, but for the Croatian Soccer Club, is huge for us. But again, time is of the essence. You know, Mark said it, we have other opportunities. Maybe they're not the best, but it's a option. Right. Uh, the youth program is growing. We need to address it. Um, I just had one last question. And I, I think that's great. And I would, I, my concern with the timing is just, it's not in the least, so there's nothing sure. like holding you to it. I don't think we would be. Um, opposed to some sort of timeline if it feels made. Um, my last question was, I was a little unclear in the lease when the improvements become the property of the cities. If it was like as soon as the improvements are added to the premises, they belong to the city technically, or if it's at the termination of the lease. That was just a question. I have different thought to Randy. I mean, I don't, we, I don't believe that we're going to take the grass out after the lease is over. Well, I mean, I think it's right. right. Well, like fencing no, think or anything like that. I don't know. But I mean, from a legal standpoint, yeah, I mean, I would let the lawyers deal with that one. Okay. But that's, that's not. Missed the pledge. Excuse me. So, um, so you're saying if this lease is approved, it's your intent to start work right away? Yeah, your, I mean, would, there, would you want it to we be? We would want to get architectural drawings right away and then have to propose it to you and go back and forth and, and then start getting bids on it. Would it be something that you would want to have done for this season or next season? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just asking what you're yeah, doing. I'm not I, trying to. Ideally, it would be great to have it being season? finished by the fall. Ideally, okay. but understanding how grass grows, <laughs> um, okay. you know, we might have to hold off another full year and not have not play on it or do anything, and actually that we would absorb that cost for one year okay. and not use it. Okay. So. Okay. And then just um, as, a, as an attorney, I would know that does structure improvements that are embedded into the ground become fixtures and they would revert back to the city. So but we can double check that with our law director just to be sure. That's right. Okay. Um, sorry, can I just do one more question? Chris Kroniak, twelve seven eight. Um, just to extrapolate on what she was saying, I believe, um, the property that is around, not just the fields, when would that be made of a, when does that actually become the city of East Lakes? So even though the property around it, am I understanding that that's something, when you guys improve the property around it, whether it's a bike path or whether it's just a, you know, playground area, is that going to, is that still city owned it's property? It's always going to be our property. It's, it's all always property. Going, okay. All right. So that part. Yeah, we're not giving any property up. Right. It's, it's, it, the parcels will still be in our name. Everything's going to be the same. And I guess the final question is, how much and why did one dollar come up? The one dollar I look at because I look at the other the way with the leases and saying they're putting the improvements in. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to say give us like we do with the library, give us 
so much money a month. The library's not making any improvements. They're just leasing the building from us. Here, they're making improvements. That's where the dollar came from. Same with the Willoughby's Lake. I mean, like us with the Senior Center. Willoughby's Lake School charges us $1. First Energy charges us $1 for the corner. First Energy charges us $1 for the, the seawall. So that's where we came up with it. It's just we didn't come up with a novel fee. Say we're going to charge rent, and you're going to put the improvements in. Just as a as a round number, if they do a 15-year lease, if they put $250,000 into it, and those are the numbers that we've talked about tonight, that comes down to almost just under $1,400 a month in rental income. Like that, we that that's their investment back in the community. So. Just for a number there, just if you're looking at finances. So actually, 1388 is the number a month. So that's how we would look at their investment. Does that include the, the general maintenance or that would no, be no, that's cost, just the yeah. that's just your 250 number, yeah. not the twenty thousand dollars a year on top of that. So it's even more money that they're putting into the city. When can we have a final contract with direction? I mean, I'll talk. I, we'll talk, and I'll have the. Lawyers talk, and what what do you need from uh, the law director? What corrections? The well, number, the parcel I mean, numbers. The parcel numbers should be corrected. I don't know. Was there anything else that was an issue that needs to be in the discussion? All questions I thought were answered fairly thoroughly. The only thing I would say as far as corrections to the lease is the A and Bs are inaccurate. Um, just as far as you're talking about subsections. Under section five, it's section A, B, B. <laughs> so Can you send your notes to the, to the law director, please? Pardon? Can you send with to the law director? Yeah, I'll talk to you. Actually, this is the old one. It's not the one that I came the up with. The newest one is the one I emailed you. The one that yeah. they put in your box. I don't yeah. know. Like I said, just toss it. Right. Have, <laughs> just, I'll send them a message just to double check the numbering, okay. section numbering, the lettering, so that it's clear. Okay. At this point, I'm going to pull the committee either to move forward or hold it in committee. Mr. Zern. Um, I say to move forward. I think it's a uh, big commitment by uh, one of the biggest partners of our city. Um, they're putting all the money in to improve the property, uh, which is not being used by any sports um, organizations at this time. No cost to the city. Um, and allowing uh, East Lake Soccer, working with East Lake Soccer, you to uh, to use the facilities, I think is uh, I think is a win-win for the city and the uh, and, and Christian Lodge. Mr. Hayden, I would uh, prefer same sentiment. Uh, I say we can move this forward. Um, I think it's a win-win with the city. You guys have been here a long time, and I have no problem with it. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, I'm gonna say move forward. We'll get the corrections on the contract. Uh, this committee will move this forward to council so that the public understands. There was no vote taken here tonight to approve the contract. All we did was move it forward out of the committee and move it over to council for their vote. Okay. With that, I'm going to adjourn this meeting at 7:07 p.m. Thanks. Thanks, you guys, for coming. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Marco.